The Power 40 podcast is an uplifting, faith-based podcast that speaks to all that's going on in our world. And our goal is to share inspirational and real life stories and experiences from notable guests around the country on matters that touch, touch everybody. And the number 40 symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. And we all experience trying times in our lives, but it's what comes from these times that make us who we are. And as we depict periods of people's lives where 40 has played out, we learn the goodness that comes from perseverance, determination, and belief. I'm your host, Danica Tramberg, joined today by David Cooks. David is an author, speaker, voice talent, podcast host, and management consultant. At the age of just 15, David experienced a spinal aneurysm, leaving him a T6 paraplegic and a wheelchair user. His ability to overcome obstacles and to achieve success in the face of adversity is what makes his story so inspiring and motivational to so many people. So thank you so much for being on today. And I cannot wait to hear about your story and your journey. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. And um, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you and to your listeners. So from a rising star in high school basketball to living in a rehab facility, facing a lifetime of paralysis, what was that defining moment like? Or was it not a defining moment? Yeah, I, I, I would... <sighs> I would call it a, a moment of transition. Uh, I think that um, the, it didn't define who I was or didn't, didn't redefine my purpose in life, but it redirected the path that I had to take. And, um, you know, the, the moment itself, you know, it was, uh, it was so quick. <laughs> it was like, you know, all of a sudden I was like in a wheelchair. And um, so, so, and I was very young at the time. So I think that also, the two of the things together combined with my faith and my family, and I had a great group of friends that helped me navigate through that time. Um, it really helped me to um, uh, be hopeful and, 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 and move forward in a positive way, uh, knowing that uh, this too shall pass. You know, I always view, view changes as temporary. And uh, although it's been a long time, it's still a temporary change. And so um, I, I addressed it that way. And um, disappointed, I mean, confused a little, but I, you know, I still believe it today that I'm, I am all right and I'm going to be all right. And that's exactly what I thought then. That's what I think now. And, and my goal as a 15 year old was, you know, to get back to school as quickly as I could with my friends and, and, um, you know, go and talk to some girls and stuff. <laughs> That's just what, that's what you do when you're 15. Right. <laughs> I, two things that I think you mentioned too were, um, you know, just a, a moment in time, right? It's a change. We all have changes, whether they're good change, bad change, things happen, but it's just kind of a moment and whether that moment lives longer than you think it is going to or whatnot. I mean, what a good way to look at it. And at such a young age, did did you see it like that at already at fifteen? Yeah, you know, you know what's so interesting as I as I as I wrote my book, um, getting undressed from paralysis to purpose, and I was looking back and trying to find articles and different things that uh, had been written about my experience, and and there was an article written by my high school newspaper, and the things that I said at age fifteen in that article were amazing to me. I was like, oh my god, did I say that? And they were they were things of wisdom and depth that um, were beyond my years. Years. And um, I really did, um, you know, you have to probably, I probably need to just thank my parents because they always instilled in us that things are going to get better, things are going to be fine. Um, God is, you're in God's hand, regardless of your situation, you're in his hand. And that's the safest place you can be. And if you stay there um, and try to figure out what, what you are to learn from this, how are you, how are you to grow from this thing? Um, and how is our family to grow? And see, I think the one thing that I think people probably don't fully understand is that it's not just you that's impacted when something like this happens. It's your family. It's a change for all of them. My siblings, my parents, you know, how are they going to, I look back at it now and I marvel at my, my mom and dad who were raising us. And it, as I could see it, they didn't skip a beat. Which, which is so amazing to me. And, but your family's impacted, all that happens. But um, you have to, in the midst of dire situations, I tell people, you have, to, you have to hope against when there is no hope. You have to believe when you don't know exactly why you're believing. Um, you have to exercise faith when you're not sure if it's real. Um, because it is that hoping against hope. Because once people 
lose hope, they go into a state of despair. Mm -hmm. And I never went into that place. Uh, I, I never went into a place of not necessarily asking why. Um, I wanted to know why if it was going to make me walk again. But if it wasn't going to, then I didn't need to know the answer why. Um, but I did need to know how to move forward. And what was I supposed to do? Because my purpose in life did not become paralyzed when I did. Um, that, that was going to be what it is. And it was my job to continue to pursue that purpose in, which, in whichever way I was going to be able to do that. That's a really good way to look at it. Just because whatever stopped at that moment, your purpose didn't stop. And I think that's so important for anyone to think about, you know, ma no matter what they're facing, maybe now uh, a hardship that they're still meant for so much. And I, I saw like one of the things that you say often is that obstacles don't stop you, stopping stops you. So what does that mean? What that means is that, um, you know, things that present challenges in our life are not designed to keep you from being successful. They're, the guy, they're designed to actually help you become successful. And what happens is oftentimes as we face challenges, and uh, we're right on the edge of our breakthrough, we stop. Mm -hmm. And the obstacle itself doesn't stop you. It's you, you stop yourself from trying to figure out how to navigate that, whether it's around it or through it or on top of it, however you have to deal with that. And so a lot of times um, our inactivity is what stops us. I stopped me. The, uh, the wheelchair didn't stop me. The paralysis didn't stop me. Uh, if, I, if I stopped, uh, attacking and moving forward and 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 living, then that's what stops me. So obstacles redefine you. Uh, obstacles. Let me, let me restate that. Obstacles don't redefine you. What they do is they redirect you, okay, and they can refine you if you allow them to, because all these things that come in life, I believe, are filters, mm -hmm. and they're, they they help us get to be the best version of ourselves. And filtering is sometimes just not comfortable. Let's just put that out there. It's very um, true. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's like, hi, I like to be filtered today. No, I don't yeah. think that's how that works. No. Uh, but that's what those obstacles do. And, and so they don't, the obstacles don't stop you. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, when you're driving and there's construction on the road, do you just stop driving? Just you just stop driving. Well, there's some construction. There's right. one of those cones right there, and no. uh, it's in my way. So I'm just gonna park the car and sit here and not go anywhere. I don't think that's what we do. So do you feel like your purpose has changed from like before this happened to now? Do you feel that your purpose like grew from this experience that you were put in? Um, you know, I think. <laughs> I, I didn't know exactly what my purpose was when I was 15 years old. Very, I, I think very few of us do. Um, but I had a love for the game of basketball and I know I wanted to continue to be a part of that in some capacity. Um, but what, and while I was doing that, uh, I began to see that I was able to really have an impact in people's lives in ways that I never knew about until they began to share it with me. And um, so I knew that part of, my purpose was going to be impacting people's lives in some capacity uh, and to try to make their lives better. One of my goals has always been to leave people better off than when I first met them. You know, so when I leave, hopefully they're a better person um, after we've interacted. And so finding the purpose and, and understanding ultimately how that purpose was to be fulfilled took time. That's the journey. That's the journey from paralysis to purpose where you, where you have where you have perspective, you have perseverance and you have partnerships. You know, you, how you see a thing determines kind of how you, how you address it. And, and the perseverance we already talked about, you can't quit. I mean, come on now. Uh, if you're going to live, you can't quit, put it that way. And then partnerships, the nice thing is that uh, I, I, I have not made this journey by myself and discovering my purpose. I've had people along the way to give me insight um, as mentors and coaches uh, to help me understand my gifts and my talents and how to use them best. And I'm a big believer in your purpose is going to be tied to some natural gifting that God has given you. If you don't believe in God, the creator has given you. And uh, it's up to us to 
um, accept that gift and then perfect that gift as best as we can and then serve other people. I'm a big believer in purpose without service is not purpose at all. Mm -hmm. And our purpose is meant, is bigger than me. Right. It's, for, it's to serve others with that and to help them become better. So, so that's kind of how I discovered my purpose. And my purpose um, is, is not difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, it's like, I gotta, oh my God, I got to do this today. Yeah. <laughs> that's not it. And so it just became a natural thing for me to, to do. And, um, and when I began to understand that I have been given a gift to connect with people, um, and I can't explain it, you know, I, I don't know how it operates, <laughs> but, yeah. it, but it does. Um, and that's when I began to see the real um, benefits and the satisfaction of knowing that I was doing what I was supposed to do. And, you know, the other thing we'll talk about that is, yeah. is that th that purpose manifests itself in whatever arena you're in. So whether I was in the business world or mm -hmm. teaching economics in high school or coaching on the sidelines or yeah. writing a book or speaking in public, that same gift rises to the surface in that environment that helps you become the best person that you can be in that environment. I love that. That makes so much sense. And I think sometimes so struggling to find that gift to figure out how to pursue your purpose, right? So like, yes. I think maybe it's even harder for people who have many gifts. How do you hone in and, and realize the direction that you're supposed to go? Yeah, that's that. Now that is difficult because <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are many things that, uh, that I, I can do. And, and like you right. say, you can, the old jack of all trades and master of none, mm -hmm. well, you know what, that's not a very good way to live. You need to right. master, yeah. master something, and then you can screw around with the other stuff. Um, but I do think that um, you will find that, that I found over time, um, I kept coming back to the same thing. You know, it, it just kept coming back again. You know, your ability to communicate, your ability to reach people, your, it just kept coming back. And I was like, you know what? I think that's got to be the core of what I do. Mm -hmm. Now, the instrument that is going to be used, I mean, for me, it was basketball for a while. Then it was teaching in the classroom for a while. Then it was speaking. And now it's speaking and, and doing these types of things. But the 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 tool, the the core of, of who I am and what I'm supposed to do is still the same. Right. And that's what that's when you know that's when you know you got it, I think, is because you're not having to change who you are or what you do because of your circumstances or mm -hmm. the situation you're in. I think you find it that way. That's a great way to put it. I really like that. I feel like this is a good segue into just closing out and reflecting on the power 40 in our lives and maybe the trials we're going through or have overcome. I think we'll understand that in life, we'll continue to experience good and bad that life throws our way. And 40 also is significant in regards to time. So Jesus spending 40 days fasting in the wilderness and so on and so forth. But if you, David, had just 40 minutes to impact the world, where would you start and what would you say? Uh, I would start with whoever was closest to me. And I would ask them how they're doing and if there's any way I could help them. And based on their response is what I would do next. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I think I, I wouldn't want to leave my current situation knowing that I could have met somebody's need that was right there next to me, right. but I was afraid to ask, or I didn't want to inquire. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I would do. And then if I can assist them in what they need, I will gladly do that. If I can't, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And I'll see if I can find someone who can, because I know that just because there's a need doesn't mean I have to meet a need. Right. I'm, I'm equipped to meet particular needs. And there are people that are assigned to me on my road of purpose that I'm supposed to minister to and I'm supposed to help. And uh, if that person wasn't the one next to me, you know what? I'm going to go find somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've got that. I've got 40 minutes. I'm trying to find the person that I'm supposed to help change their life for the better. And that would be what, that's exactly what I would do. I love that. I think that's so important and everyone can kind of adapt that to their life right now. And, you know, we're not in those dire situations, like you have 40 minutes left to do something, but everyone can look at their circle of people and 
maybe if they're uncomfortable to ask them how they're doing and actually really, really ask how they're doing, you know, not just, oh, I'm fine. But, you know, maybe that's a message for those people to go above and beyond and, and really dive into those around them. So I love that. Yeah, that's really great. The, the beginning of a relationship is very simple as conversation, mm-hmm. you know, and where that camera, where that relationship goes, you know, depends on a lot of other things, but you know, what do you have to lose? Right. What do you have to lose by, by being kind to someone, by reaching out to someone? You got 40 minutes. I, I, look, you don't need to be a punk. I tell you that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be someone that's kind and nice and trying to trying yeah. to make a difference. So um, yeah, we just maximize need more your kindness. moments. Yeah, you know, because 40 minutes is interesting. Um, I was just, um, I just had a social media post, I think this week about um, as long as there's time on the clock, mm-hmm. you can you can change and you can impact the game. Yeah. So 40 minutes may not seem like a lot of time, but it, it's it's enough time Mm -hmm. to get done what you need to get done and I think that's what we have to understand is we don't know how much time we have but what we do have is enough is enough time and that's enough time to make a difference and so um be intentional about that I mean I I want to make a difference I mean Mm -hmm. I really do I'm not playing around with this I want I want want to really make a difference in in people's lives and and hopefully change the world a little bit small acts spark great change so it just takes one person Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so, so much for being on today and your story. Where can people um, find you if they just want to inquire, maybe get your book or, or learn more? Sure. Um, you can uh, go to my website, which is davidcooksspeaks.com. Uh, you can get my book there and find out more about me. Uh, you can also go to Amazon if you like the book. But if you go to my website, I sign them for you. Um, also, you can uh, reach me at, at sign DCE Speaks. Uh, and that's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Um, and also the last thing would be our podcast um, page is paralysis, the number two, purpose.com. And so you can find us on uh, social media platforms with that as well. That's amazing. I'm going to check all those things out after this too. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And um, if anyone wants to stream this podcast, find it on the Power 40 Um Spotify, Apple, anywhere you stream your podcast or powerofhumans.com. Thank you.